Well, hello there, folks, and welcome to Truck King and lovely Palm Springs, California. Hot Palm Springs, California. Yes, absolutely it is. The Still black, 100 degrees here. The black truck is radiating heat right now. So, yeah, we're out here with Chevrolet. We're actually driving the entire ZR2 or ZR2 lineup. So watch for those videos. They're coming up. Right now, we want to take a closer look at this truck. This is the Silverado light duty with the brand new Duramax diesel, and it's a ZR2. And, of course, when ZR2 first launched, you couldn't get this engine, but they added it in this year. So now we can get ourselves a, a diesel ZR2, Dad. So yeah, we got to walk around this thing and just talk about all the different options we can get on this truck. And we'll talk about the fact that this is pretty much the only diesel that you can get anymore in a half ton. That is true. Actually, anything underneath a heavy duty, this is the only one. They're gone from half tons. They're gone from midsizers. Yep, absolutely. However, GM has decided to tow the line and quite honestly, this was the best of the bunch. It's an inline six and the Ford and the FCA really just couldn't match up. Yeah, that is a fair point. Uh, why don't you pop the hood and we'll show them the engine. Because as Dad said, that is kind of the defining characteristic here. This is an inline six. It's an I6 diesel rather than the V6s that were in this category. And that, it certainly shows itself in the way it drives. So there it is, this is 305 horsepower, 495 pound-feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10-speed automatic transmission. And, and yeah, Dad, the numbers are one thing, but for me, it's about how smooth the power is. You know, it really comes on nice. And that's from the first time that we drove it. Of course, the engine's been around for, this is probably its third year. Correct, we've driven it in many trucks. Yeah, but uh, the linear torque, the low vibration um, is actually very quiet for a diesel. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I'm glad that they've decided to do this. And I'm just going to throw this out here, too, because, you know, Ford and FCA, their, you know, decision to move away from the diesel wasn't necessarily because they had bad engines, mm -hmm. but because EV at the moment is the sweetheart poster child of the government. So, they don't want diesel, and they've done everything they can do to crush innovation, specifically in small diesel. GM has not bowed down to that pressure, sure. and I compliment them on that. And I do agree with you. The only thing I'll say is Volkswagen didn't help. <laughs> the government is now not helping, but Volkswagen triggered this domino effect. And, uh, yeah, that's what we've seen all the diesels disappear because other brands don't want to deal with the hassle, you know, legal or not. They just, like you said, they know the government is not backing diesels right now, and so it's a, it's a, it's a tougher sell than bringing out a new EV. No, you're absolutely right, and that, that is the problem because you could have the cleanest, uh, best diesel on the market, and the government would still call it dirty. Sure. Because, and like I said, at the moment, all they want to know is EV, EV. Yeah, so I agree with you there, which is, yeah, it's awesome that GM has not only kept the diesel, but they're expanding it throughout the lineup. Again, first year, you couldn't get it in the ZR2, and people complained. We heard it in the comments constantly. People always want more choice, especially if, hey, maybe you're towing a lot with your ZR2. Mm -hmm. This is probably an obvious choice. So it's nice, not only did they keep it here, but they're actually spreading the availability as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, we did lose the, the 2.7 diesel, the tiny diesel, yeah. in the, you know, Canyon, Colorado twins. So... The fact that we still got this one, I'm happy. Yeah, nice to have it. So let's close it up. We can just talk about ZR2 for a second here. The first thing you're going to notice is the styling. It is a different fascia. The front grille is different. Red tow hooks, which we all know make every truck better off-road. That's just a given, right? Another nice feature, the flow tie right here. That's the little pass-through Chevy bow tie. They say it's for cooling. I believe them, but it's also just... Pretty cool to look at. <laughs> and then you get those cool Duramax badges up on the hood there. Uh, and of course, this truck is lifted. It does get a factory lift, so it's going to have more ride height than your standard ZR2 as well, or standard Silverado, I should say, as well. Yeah, and of course, you got the cutaways on the bumpers, yes. actually front and rear, which improves your approach and departure angle. Exactly. And then you'll notice a really nice rock rail right back here, which... Uh, I could have used on my Ram recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is some good coverage. So I'll tell you right now, talking about the approach angle up front, that is 31.8 degrees of approach. Overall ground clearance here is 11.2 inches. The breakover angle here in the center, that's 23.4 degrees. 
the wheelbase here, Dad, and we should also mention this truck is only available in one configuration, that is short bed crew cab. So the wheelbase here is 147 and a half inches. Uh. And then finally out back, the departure angle comes in at 23.3 inches. And of course, thanks to the lift, that's all gonna be better than what you're gonna get on the standard Silverado. And then the numbers are good, but honestly, the off-road equipment here is also awesome. First of all, front and rear lockers, that's a huge deal on this truck. You're getting a set of Goodyear Wrangler Territory tires. And if I can take a second to complain, come over here, I'll show you. On the Wrangler territory, Goodyear decided to stamp MT on the side of the tire. Now, anyone who's paid attention to tires forever knows that MT means mud terrain. Well, not on this tire. This is an all-terrain, but MT stands for maximum traction, and I just don't agree. I don't think you should change names like that to confuse people like me. And honestly, that's what they're trying to do, confuse consumers into thinking, hey, maybe that's a big mud terrain. Well, it is not. <laughs> Uh, and then what else? We have the multi-flex tailgate here on our ZR2. Again, no, nothing new here, right? We've seen it for a couple of years. No, but it did migrate over from GMC. And also frankly, true. you can get this on the HDs now as well. Yeah, they spread it throughout the lineup too, which is a nice thing. Um, if I get the right button here, I will get it to go all the way down for us. Beautiful. And as long as you don't have a hitch in, that step works really well, and I did actually experience that personally recently, and it was not fun. So, yes, do not drop your multi-flex or multi-pro if you still got a hitch down there. So, I, I do have to also point out one other thing, because as sure. much as I like black trucks, if you're going to drive in the desert, you just don't want a black truck. You because get so dirty. we were off-road in this thing for a grand total of three minutes. Yeah. And take a look at the way the dust has absolutely stuck to this truck. So unless you're one of those guys that, you know, you love detailing, well then have at her. <laughs> yeah, even where our camera mount there left a, a nice little mark too. But you're absolutely right about black and luckily it's available in a lot of colors. I love the blue that comes in on this truck, yep. but they got a lot of different unique well, I'm colors. I'm a fan too. of red too. So uh, why don't I show you inside now? If you want to jump over to the passenger side, Liam, I'll come in the driver's side and we'll give him a little tour of the interior. Truly does feel like a luxury truck like you get in this truck and then you get in a high country or you get into a, a nicely trimmed out ltz and they feel really similar now and that always wasn't the case off-road trucks they didn't always get sort of the best tech but here in the zr2 we have it all we got the big touchscreen, fully digital driver display trailer brake controller down there heated and cooled seats head up display um, yeah, all the tech you could want. Paddle shifters, which, you know, people always think of as a performance thing, but it's also nice for towing. You got a big trailer on. Yeah, for nice down downshifting on your long grades. Exactly. So, yeah, the, the comfort and the technology are all here in the ZR2. You really don't miss out on, uh, on just about anything, right? And if I can uh, complain about one more thing, Dad, I have lots to complain about. By all means. It's this new generation of General Motors shifter. And this Hate is that shifter. Not ZR2 specific. Dad agrees. I don't agree. I don't like shifters that return to a home position. I like a shifter that goes into park, comes down into drive. And honestly, I've done this personally. And my muscle memory tells me to go up into park. I've put the truck into reverse and thought it was in park. Now, granted... We drive a lot of trucks. If you owned this, if it's the only vehicle you drive, you might get used to it. But why even introduce the possibility of having a safety issue here? And the thing I always go back to, Dad, is the Jeep Grand Cherokee had a shifter just like this. And then they had a massive roll away issue and someone passed away from it. And then they totally got rid of the shifter. And then a couple years later, GM tries to reinvent the wheel here. So I, yeah, I just don't know there, why there they tried. There are certain things that have been this way for a hundred years. It's P-R-N-D-L. Yeah. Just leave it like that. You can make different shift knobs. You can put it up here. You can put it down there. You can stick it on the dashboard. But don't, don't do this where when I jam it up, it goes into reverse. Because I've simple. done it too. I opened the door and started walking away. Yeah, keep it simple. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this video, and you know what, Dad, what can you say? Uh, the verdict on this truck, this little walk around, has to just be yay for more diesels, yay for more diesel availability. We like diesels in small trucks and in half tons, so the more the better, and this is a particularly good one. And if you want a ZR2 with a diesel, now you can have it. Yeah, it's That's the key. hard to complain about more choice, right? Absolutely. So, and it's a good choice. It is. Fair. Oh, and by the way, the AC works real good because <laughs> damn, it's hot. <laughs> it is. 
So as I said off the top, uh, we are down here in Palm Springs. We're driving the entire ZR2 lineup, Colorado, Silverado, and then Silverado HD. So this is just the first video from the event. Watch for more ZR2 content real soon. And please go in the comments now and let us know what you want to see on this truck, on the other ZR2s, because we can actually read your comments before we shoot the review and then maybe try to work some of that stuff in there. So please go in the comments right now. Let us know what you want to see. As always, while you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come back here to Truck King to watch more ZR2 content. See you guys later. See you later.